Hello San Antonio, I'm Christopher Herring, the Executive Director of Global Chamber San Antonio. And today on What in the World, I have House District 119 candidate Liz Campos. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So we're getting close to yet another series of elections in San Antonio and Bear County. Uh, we have candidates who are in the runoff. Uh, for the respective offices, and uh, Liz is actually uh, competing for a position to be the representative for a very historic part of our uh, landscape. Can you tell us about what this district represents, Liz? Well, um, the district represents, gosh, a whole lot. So I've been in the district, I'll start with that, uh, for 51 years now. Okay. Born and raised, uh, lived on Rigsby my entire life, purchased a house across the street from where I was raised. And, um, you know, we have the beautiful missions, mm. of course. Um, and so... Um, well, the missions are a, a tourist attraction. Tourist attraction, but still. And an educational. And educational, and it's yeah. in District 119. Okay. Um, so we have, of course, San Jose, we have the uh, Mission Espada. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just great. The missions are absolutely beautiful. And, um, I uh, go to church at San Jose uh, Mission Church. Oh, what are the cities that are also incorporated into yeah. your it's, district? It's actually a really big district, and it starts off like in the Edgewood uh, district. Edgewood, okay. Edgewood ISD, uh, just a portion of that. And then it goes to the south side, through the southeast side, a portion of the east side, and then all the way to the northeast side, which um, China Grove, uh, well that's still on the south side, but China Grove, St. Hedwig, okay. uh, Live Oak, Universal City, and Converse. Wow. And um, is uh, Joint Base San Antonio in that footprint as well? Yes. Yes, Randolph Air Force Base. Okay, so and I understand that you are a um, retired major, so thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah, thank and, you. Um, I appreciate that. My brother-in-law retired from Randolph Air Force Base as well, and my sister uh, was a civilian at Randolph, and she was a vice president of the union for many years. Okay, and so when we're looking at um, the runoff, so who's in the runoff? Um, it's me and Jennifer Ramos. Okay, so, and I think the election was what, in March? So, it was in March. So in that election, you actually came out like at 46% of the, of the vote, and I believe that she was around 42.9%. Correct. So that's pretty substantial. And then there was another 10% that went to another gentleman. Uh, Sean Viasana. Okay. Yeah, and he, he is a, a, a great individual. Okay. And uh, very young and mm -hmm. very motivated and, and smart. I mean, he's got a degree from St. Mary's. Okay. Um, um, uh, forensic science. And, and he's just, I was really impressed with him. And I was really happy in that, that he ran. And uh, to have that courage to do that. And he's got a great attitude, and I told him, like, keep going, don't stop. Sure. Like, for you to decide to run for a state rep position, he's never ran for office. It says a lot about his character. Yeah. And so hopefully we'll see him on another campaign trail. Okay. Well, he's one of my he's one of my Facebook friends, a new Facebook friend, and you know I saw that he's a father and he's a man of faith, and he's uh, he's definitely someone that that I hope that. You would even consider trying to see how you can use his talents in that huge uh, area because you have a, a number of school districts, oh, or absolutely. you would have a number of school districts if you're elected. But how, how many? About how many school uh, districts? I think there's nine districts. Okay. Districts and uh, Randolph Brooks is one of them, and uh, yeah, Sean's a great guy. And, and that district, I mean, nine school districts, which each have their own personality. Absolutely. Um, sure. So just going back to the dates. So I, I marked my calendar. So June 29th will be the beginning of what? Early voting. Or early voting. To, uh, July 10th. Okay. And then election day is July 14th. I want uh, to stress to everyone is that I will always have an open door policy to everybody, and um, you know make sure and, and hear them out because um, I have found being in the district for. As long as I have been, I have felt neglected. I've talked to people in the district that it, that's what you hear all the time. It's just, you know, I can't get through to my representative. You know, nobody listens. And so I want to treat people the way I like to be treated, and that is with respect, you know, and, and everybody deserves that, to be heard. Um, we, we're, like you say, we're not going to agree all the time, and one thing I will not do is never make a promise to you that I'm not going to keep. 
but you're going to know and appreciate the effort that I'm, I'm making to do right by you because it's all a, a, it's it's about you know being a candidate and, and and running and then winning it's about being a true public servant and sometimes it's forgotten yeah. my viewers okay. really want to know a couple questions because uh, what in the world wouldn't be special unless I gave you the hard question so first of all you were the chief of staff uh, for Senator Carlos Uresti Correct. Um, and so we know that he had legal problems mm -hmm. and I just need to know what was your uh, role in his um, in his life, and were you aware, or how do you address this to the voters when they ask you about, about your affiliation um, as a chief of staff? Um, so I worked for him for eight years as a paralegal, and then as a chief of staff, and then I was a admin legal administrator and a chief of staff, and um, I will never take away the experience that I gained from working for him. Mm -hmm to be involved with the community. Um, again, I said, I, um, my parents instilled a lot of good values in us. And you know, you don't judge, you don't forget where you come from, you stay humble. And so with that, and also my, my dad and my mom were like, treat people how you want to be treated. Sure. So with that being said, um, you know, I, it, it was sad that that happened to him, but I'm never going to take away the opportunity to be his legal administrator, to be his chief of staff, to be in the community, to do everything that I did because we did some great events. Right. Uh, I will ne I want But you I never had your hand in no. the pot of whatever. He I was, was gone doing. before. I left in okay. 2010. So okay. bet before all that happened. And an employee does not have control over their employer. Now, if you're a partner, that's a whole different thing. I wasn't a partner. Right. If I was an employee and if I was involved in it, I probably would have gotten in trouble. Okay. But, you know, I um, like to treat people the way I like to be treated. Okay. And, you know, there was a lot of, he did a lot of good for the community when he was a senator. Uh, giving He did wonderful health fairs for seniors, sure. backpack events, all kinds of yeah. things. So I'm not going to kick somebody when they're down because it's just not my demeanor. Okay. And I'm not going to forget the good, but I do not condone corruption and I was not involved in it. And if anyone has any questions or concerns, I'm open to it. I'm okay. very honest, I'm very upfront. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, so I'll give you a second hard question then. What, what differentiates you from your opponent? I come with a clean slate. Okay. I'm, an, I'm a, you know, strong. A clean slate. Clean slate. Okay. Okay. I'm a strong, independent, hardworking Latina and I'm self-made and I stand strong and I stand alone. Okay. I'm not in anybody's pocket. I'm not affiliated. Uh, no one dictates to me what to do or what not to do. Um, I decided to run for this office on my own, mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of that. I think I'm a success story with the fact that, you know, uh, having to get out of school and not having the uh, opportunity to go to college. Um, but I, I'm, I'm a hard worker, and I've got a great experience. So, so is there any conflict, because I, I remember seeing um, your opponent in a, another interview, but she talked about how she's a, a part of an engineering company that actually has contracts with TechStop. Um, and so if she's elected, then does, does she uh, stand down from that position, or how does that work? Um, I don't think that there's any um, regulations that make her have to step down so oh, okay. she can continue to be a state rep and still work for this for this company uh half engineering so i will tell you when i ran against her in 2011 the reason i ran against her is because and this is her story so that's not a conflict of interest is what you're saying no. so you can you can uh, be working with a, a texas contract and then also be the the, the representative well I, I think that you may have to like recuse yourself and not be so involved but um, she's done it regardless of the rules, and, and it's just true, you know. In 2011, she took $18,000 from the taxpayers' money, and she gave it to a, fr a family friend who owned a cleaning business. In what capacity are you talking about? When, what position you said? Oh, eight? I'm sorry. When she was a councilwoman, she okay. gave $18,000 to a family friend who owned a cleaning business for catering. Oh. Okay. That was one thing. And then she was working for WellMed. Okay, she's getting paid a decent salary. She was making sure that WellMed got contracts from the city. And then uh, there was an ethics file complaint against her for that. And she stepped down, uh, I'm sorry, she resigned from WellMed. And my thinking is, 
if you didn't do anything, why did you step down? So the Ethics Commission gave her a slap on the hand, and that was in 2011. And it gets better. So after 2011, she decides that she's going to run for commissioner, which we all knew that. And I remember when I was running against her, I asked her, are you going to step down and run for a commissioner? Are you going to stay in your term? And she um, didn't answer the question. But we all knew she was going to run for commissioner. So she talks about how she got 76% of the vote, which is a lot. And with that, you know, votes are precious. Mm -hmm. And you would think that she would have at least given D3, you know, the, the respect that they've earned to stay her whole term. Instead, she stepped down to run for commissioner because commissioner, uh, their seats are up every four years. Right. Council's up every two years. Right. So she stepped down so she could run. And at that and time, the commissioners were paid a lot more oh, than yeah. any city six councilman. Fig six figures. Uh, there yeah. was, I don't think there was a, a pay when she was a councilwoman. Right, correct. Right, so. so, but before she left council, she gave a contract, and this is all, again, in record, because Everything I do, I do it based on fact with open records okay. requests, and I get my facts together, and I think that comes from my experience as a paralegal. So she gave a contract to MERS Texas Housing. Oh. She steps down from council, and she goes to work for MERS. Oh. She also gave contracts to Half Engineering, who she's now working for. So in my eyes, the difference between her and I is every job I've gotten, I've gotten on my own based on my experience. It's not tit for tat. If she's going to be in Austin, she's already working for this company mm -hmm. that she does business development for. They already have a contract. Is that her interest to self-serve? Mm -hmm. So is she going to really fight for the district or is she going to fight for whatever is better for her? And that's a real concern because, you know, we well, can't, we're tired of, I'm tired of the career politician. We have to fight for the people. Okay. Well, again, I think that's where the, the voters will come in. Um, they have to make that right. uh, clear distinction in terms of what they uh, want in their next uh, state representative. Um, I think that uh, if the evidence is true, it's out there. It the people can there. research it. Yes. Um, but again, I'd like to thank you for being on our show today. Uh, this is Christopher Herring, uh, the Executive Director for uh, Global Chamber San Antonio and my show, What in the World? So again, thank you all for uh, tuning in today and thank, thank you, you for uh, the parting thank questions. That I couldn't end the show without asking those two tough questions because I know that my viewing audience really wants to know uh, what's going on in uh, House District 119 and what makes you different than your uh, competition. Uh, the good thing to say is that you did come out on top uh, in the very first vote and so uh, we'll see what happens on the, the second. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Uh, election day uh, will be on uh, July 14th. Uh, and really, I tell, I tell people, you know, why we're doing uh, What in the World, uh, focusing on our uh, political processes, because everything that happens with business really starts with our vote. So we have to have qualified candidates who are first running and then two who get elected. Mm -hmm. So then that way when the business community, uh, in this case, will be going to Austin, uh, we can know that we have the support of at least talking through issues, not saying that our elected officials will always agree with the business person, but at least we have an open uh, door to communication. My campaign headquarters is 210-610-9300. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact uh, me at the campaign headquarters or through uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, I will be available and answer any questions you've got. Okay. And don't forget to vote on July 14th for Liz Campos. Again, what in the world wanted to make sure that uh, we inform our voters and uh, you know, we've, we've had other political candidates on our show simply because uh, they asked to be, and uh, I, I, I do believe that uh, having good information is what uh, our voters need. I also say to those who are running, you can reach out to me uh, just the same. Uh, so thank you again, Liz, for your time today. What in the World is really uh, brought to you uh, by Global Chamber San Antonio. Uh, I'm the Executive Director, Christopher Herring. And again, I look forward to uh, visiting with you. Uh, uh, go to global.
globalchamber.org if you want to know more about our global chamber. We have 525 metropolitan locations across the world and once you join uh, with San Antonio, you're connected to the world under one membership. No one else can say that.